Previously on the Beer Pioneer. I'm here at Sullivan's Bay, the original landing place of William Buckley all those years ago. It's the first British settlement in Victoria in August 1803. A number of convicts had tried to escape. Uh, William Buckley had taken off. <laughs> He's out there, somewhere, crossing country, north to south. Following rainbows for the liquid pot of gold. The man is amber obsessed. He's conquering fears, drinking boutique beers just for you and me. He's a man on a mission, a liquid dietitian, a bearded brewery magician. I oh, is the beer pioneer. Pioneer. He's the beer pioneer. pioneer. He's the admiral of cheer. He's the admiral of cheer. He is the amber cavalier. He's the amber cavalier. And he's the malted musketeer. He's the malted musketeer. He is the bevy buccaneer. He's the bevy buccaneer. Oh yes, he is the beer pioneer. Yes, he is. This season I'm retracing the steps of William Buckley, an escaped convict who managed to survive decades in the Victorian wilderness and whose legend inspired a popular Australian phrase, you've got Buckley's chance. After William Buckley escaped from Collins settlement, he made his way up Port Phillip Bay, running for four hours before stopping for a break. I'm not running, of course. I'm following Buckley's journey in the relative comfort of a reasonably priced rental car and today I'll be stopping into a couple of breweries in Dramana on the Mornington Peninsula. Later I'll be visiting Blake at Jetty Road Brewing but first I'm checking out Two Bays Brewing, one of the only dedicated gluten-free breweries in the country. So a word of the wise, don't rock up there all lathered in gluten, you'll be refused entry and to be honest, it'd be a pretty weird thing to do anyway. First up, a little chat with Richard. Great to have you down here. Hey, it's so good to be here. What a spot. This is all your dream come true, right? This is your baby. You know, I got diagnosed with celiac disease uh, about five years ago, and I just used to love craft beer, and felt like I was missing out for a number of years, and then I decided to do something about it. So we set up two bays two years ago, and uh, we're off and running. We find that 80 or 90% of our uh, punters down at the bar here aren't gluten-free but they'll come with their mates. And the whole idea with beer is beer brings people together and gluten-free people want to have a beer with their mates as well. And they can't do that anywhere else. But yeah, this is where they can come down, try nine different beers. Generally speaking, most beers will have gluten. Yeah, so gluten uh, is a protein and it's, it's inherent in barley, wheat and rye and oats. You know, they're the main ingredients. And barley in particular is, is you know, 90% of all beers are made out of barley. So we use millet, buckwheat and rice. There's actually more grains that don't have gluten than there are ones with gluten, so we can use lentils, amaranth, teff, um, quinoa, um, so you can do all sorts of things. Two Bays is a dedicated gluten-free brewery using real grains and traditional brewing methods. The others will all use uh, a syrup of some sort and we use actual grains. So we brew it the same way as a, as a normal barley brewery, we use the same equipment. I've had your pale ale before and I didn't realise it was gluten-free. Yeah, yeah, well it's our gold medal winning pale ale as of, as of a couple of weeks ago. Now. The, it's the formal title. Yeah, the formal title. It's probably a lighter mouthfeel yeah. than a barley beer. And so people sort of, well, if you come from a double IPA to our beer, you'll kind of go, oh, that's a lighter beer. But in fact, you know, our IPA is a 6% beer. Uh, it's a very smashable 6% beer that can get you a lot of trouble if you get going <laughs> on it. It wasn't always grains and brews for Richard. I've worked in the big corporate world and I spent all my life really dreaming about how I could wear t-shirts and shorts to work. <laughs> yeah. And I also had this dream about owning a brand and, and building a brand of some sort. Yeah, I always say, if I didn't have celiac disease, I wouldn't own a brewery. 10% of the population avoid gluten in some shape or form. So that's sort of too many people that are avoiding gluten for whatever reason, whether it's a medical condition like me or just because they feel better avoiding gluten. But you know what? A lot of them actually just want to have a beer and look the same as everybody else. We're really proud of our brand. In every capital city, we're in tap somewhere. We're now in nearly 1,500 venues around Australia. 
So, you know, we're really excited about getting that distribution. Before I take a look around, Richard's got something planned for me at the bar. So Richard, what's going on? So I'm this confused, I thought I was here to drink beers. Because it is so different to barley, I thought I'd show you the different ingredients we use. So, we, this is our millet, um, which is budgerigar seed, so you want to taste some of that. We've got 14 different millet malts, so we can do oh, all sorts of stuff from... That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's really sort of nice and nutty. Yeah. Um, this is the buckwheat, so I don't think it's quite as nice as the millet. I like to, I can eat millet as if it was a snack. Um, and then we have rice. So we have about six different rice malts. We tend to use one in particular. And our beers are made up of a combination of all of these. Oh, okay. So each beer will, might have multiples. Yeah, yeah. So really nice and nutty flavours, and that kind of comes through to the beers. You combine these, maybe feel sultanas. That's a, a breakfast muesli, I reckon. And this is where head brewer Christian comes in. You need that creative genius yeah. to come up with all these recipes. He um, did, does have a genius vibe about it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I knew it just by looking at him. <laughs> I just like drinking them all. He comes up every now and again and says, what do you think about this one? And I go, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm more at your end of the scale. Yeah, it's much easier, much easier <laughs> at our end. Time to meet Christian and take a look at how this beer is made. Christian, head brewer of this place, Richard was kind of asking if I can uh, help you out a little bit. You have to... we, actually, we actually need your help today. So... Okay, really? Yep. Oh my God, We're okay. There. This is my big chance, I hope That's I don't muck it. it up. What a place to work. It's the factory of dreams. Do you have an interest in the gluten-free beer before you were here, or is it you're uh, more of no, a beer not lover? No, specifically. Yep. Just a, I was a barley brewer, as we, as we call them now, so... Yep. And has it been challenging? Very challenging, right. but I, I like that kind of challenge and it hasn't inhibited our creativity in some senses, so. Yeah, you're still, you're doing, I mean, I've never heard of a lentil beer before. Uh, lentil beer is definitely a new thing, but we're still doing, you know, passion fruit sours, double IPAs, um, heaps of cool stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so. awesome. Rice, rice brewing is actually pretty common. If you know Japanese lagers, Chinese yeah. lagers, uh, a lot of Asian lagers use rice to lighten the mouthfeel of their beer, but buckwheat and millet are probably less common. Yeah. Um, and buckwheat pancakes. Uh, were they good? Yeah. Well, let's hope the beer's good as well, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> treat me like an idiot. Uh, it's your first day on the job. It's my I'm... first day on the job. Yeah, right. treat, treat me like an idiot. <laughs> well, this is our pilot system. So this is where the lentil beer for one was produced. Um, this is where it all kind of began, just on this little small kit here. It makes about 300 litres. Um, right. And it's important to us because everything, a lot of ingredients we really have to try and make sure that they're going to work as a commercial saleable beer. Yep. Um, they don't necessarily all work, but there's a lot of experimentation and development that goes into it and it all happens on this kit. So there's times where you're like, I'm putting in a lot of work and you, you don't know until you're having a sip? Yep, that's it. Everything we do um, is done very similar to how a regular brewery does it. It doesn't have gluten in it and then it's taken out later. There's no enzymes to pull the gluten out. It's all a raw malted grain yep. and it has to be mashed uh, in a very similar way to a regular barley mash. Right. But some of the, the challenges we face across all our beers is that the natural enzymes that are in the malt um, aren't always in the malt for us. I reckon that's the thing that a lot of beer drinkers don't realise. Don't understand. Yeah. It's the enzymes. Enzymes. Enzymes are important. That's right, yeah. Exogenous enzyme mashing, they call it. Yeah. Yeah, exogenous enzyme mashing. Yeah. So all our fermentation happens um, very similar to a barley brewery. Yep. There's a few challenges there, but for the most part, it's a regular fermentation with a regular brewer's yeast. So we have in this tank a, a passion fruit sour, the pulp fusion. Really cool to be able to, you know, bring previous experience, brewing whatever styles we feel like. Sort of like, yeah, you're on a new frontier, kind of. That's does that mean? This so is real beer pioneering. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure, to be honest. Yeah, but no beers until we get some work done. Okay. Though. All right, he's up, Christian. There's only one beer pioneer here. Time to get involved. First up with some millet. So this is a Munich millet. Um, Am I allowed to touch it? Please, you can eat some. Oh yeah? Um, yeah, right, it is tiny. It's a tiny grain, uh, which has some, some practical limitations, but out of all the grains we use, this tastes the most similar to a barley grain. Right. Um, so it, it does have a kind of uh, sort of pea flavour to it. It tastes good. Tastes good. I'd eat this. I that. mean, I am eating this. And it goes through the, the same maltings process that barley does. It does taste like pea. So we're going to mill the grain the same way you would barley malt, and yep. the principles are the same. We want to open the grain up, but we don't want to pulverise the husk. Right. Because the husk does help in that natural filtration process in oh, the mash, right, in okay. the water tun, yeah. Oh, cool. So the principles are the same, but obviously our grain is a lot smaller. Yeah. So lifting it up, chucking it in, and then the machine does its business. Yep. But we've got about 400 kilos to mill, so it's going to take you a while. I'll do the first one. <laughs> so. Hey, 
and then it's over that lever. That's all? Easy. <laughs> um, I, uh, literally never happened in the history of the mill. Never happened in the history of the mill. <laughs> oh. Everything's fine, I swear. Next job. It's time to add the passion fruit to the passion fruit sour. Gloves on, so you know we mean business. Where's it going in? In that little hole. Feeling pretty confident about this. So you have to open that. Yeah. Get that over that as quickly as possible. And that's <laughs> gonna squirt everywhere. Why, why am I doing this? <laughs> this feels like a stitch up. Is it a twist or just pop? Pull real hard. We've got eight bags to do. <laughs> hey! Is that what you were expecting? He nailed it. Then you got Man, that smells beautiful. Tilt the bag up and just squeeze out all the passion fruit. He said, he said that you might not have picked that up, but he said I did real uh, good. Yeah, you did a good job. I don't want to put Christian out of a job. So after the break, it's off to the bar for a drink. Finally. Time for a beer. This is a gold, gold medal winning uh, pale ale. Oh yeah, right. So, see what you think. Oh, I know this one, I've had this before. It's, yeah, it's lovely. So what do you think against a barley beer? See, I, f I forgot again that uh, this is gluten free. Got to keep reminding me. No, you don't have to eat this. So um, why don't we try a couple of others, eh? Hey? Yes. Isn't that amazing? You have to build your own empire just to have a place to go have a quiet drink. Next up, the sour. It's very you, you remember fruity. that passion fruit yeah. you just chucked in? <laughs> oh yeah, that's great. I, I don't know why, I would never would have guessed it, but passion fruit is such a nice match with beer. It, it is good. We did a lime and coriander beer uh, a couple of times at the tap room that's been a really popular beer as well. Right. But just a really easy drinking, you know, Christian's criteria with, with the sours was he wanted to be able to smash two cans after mowing the lawn on a hot day. Okay. And that was the sort of thing we looked for. So yeah, that's think, science. Mm. You're right. It's yeah, a... I know, he's not a scientist. <laughs> so this is our, our new release, it's called Smash. Okay. So Smash is single malt, single hop. And this one we've used the new Eclipse hop. So just released by uh, Hop Products Australia is one of their brand new hops. All oh, right. Ooh. Zesty mandarin, though, like. Right. So, and it has, it kind of has that um, really refreshing bit of kiwi fruit to it. Mm. Sound like a wine wanker, really, but. Yeah, this is great. This is the one that I've been curious about the whole time the lentil beer. This one's our lentil, so it's still made with some of the millet and, and all the other ingredients, but instead of buckwheat, we put lentils in there. So, well, you tell me what you think. Oh, uh, don't, don't do that to me. I'm going to say. So it's a pale ale style. This one's got a bit of a sort of honey and a bit of yeah. There's a lot going sort of on. on your mouth feel. Yeah, you know, it's giving us some really nice body, which is sort of one of the things we're looking for in our beers, and we think the lentils are going to uh, be a really key ingredient in that. So, I tell you, it's great having you over here, Matt. This is really good. I don't usually start drinking at nine o'clock in the morning, so it's good. Well, yeah, that's the funny thing about this show. You sort of um... <laughs> it's beer o'clock somewhere in the world, right? And there's lentils in this beer, so it's basically health food, right? Lastly, Ollie's Brown Ale. Mm. So with the darker beer, you get a bit more malt coming through. Yep. Um, we've got a little bit of hop on it as well. Um, but that's just, you know, 
part of the fun. AG loved hops, so we put a bit of hops in the brown as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's that's nice. As soon as you start talking about all the flavours, I'm like, <laughs> I know. I don't get, say something yeah, stupid. We get man. super passionate about a beer. I mean, it's why we give the customer a, a sheet with all the beers, and they can sit there with their friends and just discuss different beer, what the flavour is, which one they like, which one they don't. They get to do that away from the guy who Correct. created it all. Yeah, yeah. I'm here going, don't, don't muck well, this uh, up. Christian's, Christian's just come back to keep an eye on you to make sure you're liking his beer. So. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking me through them, Richard. It's been a real pleasure to be here at your brewery today. Um, I think we might take off, or at least they might. Do you mind if I hang around a bit longer? Sure, happy to, and I'll join you too. Some more? Go again. Yeah, that was great. Not a bad way to start the day, and now I continue my epic journey a whole 800 metres up the road to Jetty Road Brewery, a brand taking over shelves all over Australia. We're at Jetty Road Brewery, and I'm here with the main man, Blake. Hey, Blake, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming down. Looking so, forward to showing you around. I'm not no mucking about. You are the main guy. You started it. You're the head brewer. You're the brains of the operation. That's a lot of pressure. I am one of six guys that sort of was founding members of Jetty Road and I'm head brewer. Should we have a look? Let's do it. Oh wow, this is, this is nice. It's usually packed here, but I've come nice and early to escape the crowd. This is sort of where you spend a lot of your day, I guess. Or ma mainly out there in the brewery. Out in the brewery is where I'm kind of chained up. It's a great space, and there's even an upstairs shuffleboard room. And a stage. And this is so I like how you've already incorporated me into the mural. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the very last things that we did as we were opening. A couple of our friends are local artists, Jack and Josh, at the Snake Hole in Mornington, and they, we just basically let them go crazy and just said we want a coastal theme um, related to beer. Um, and this is kind of what they came up with, and it's um, probably the most Instagram part of our brewery. So well, what's the story of the Jetty Road Brew? We're not on Jetty Roads, so why is it? No. So. Jetty Road is actually a residential street about two kilometres from here. Jetty Road started with six uh, founding members, one of which was my old boss as cabinet maker. Yeah. Uh, he's a home brewer and has been for years, so I ended up basically home brewing with him at a probably an earlier age than I should have been. And we both got the bug for it, and it's my best mate's a management accountant. We went to Oktoberfest together, and we'd always wanted to own a basically a pub together. We'd sort of known each other since we were two weeks old. A few other guys have jumped in along the way. I mean, I've talked about starting a brewery with mates, but it rarely, if ever, gets to this stage. You've had the dream for a long time, now it's happening. How are you feeling about it? Uh, it takes like a lot to look back. We're always kind of looking forward. There's always yeah. something to do. So every now and then we kind of try and ground ourselves a bit, look back at what we've achieved and um, really enjoy it. Enjoy it, Blake. You make beer for a living. We actually found all this timber for the bar um, in the backyard of up in Merricks, locally up in Red Hill. And oh, it's no kidding. Ex St Kilda Pier. Yeah, just having a little tap of the timber here, making sure everything's structurally sound. I'm really keen to see our, you know, the yeah. business section out the back. Have a look at where all the all the beer comes from. It says staff only, but you sneak me in. Yeah, I reckon I reckon I know a bloke. come through to the stainless steel jungle. December 2017, on 21st, we opened yep. the venue here. We'd been selling beer and kegs for about 12 months before that. Yeah, right. Um, we launched cans about a month before we opened here. This room was sort of completed November the following, so 2018. Right, so, so it's still pretty, pretty young. But I mean, that's most of the craft beer industry in Australia, I guess. Exactly, yeah. so a lot of guys like Stone and Wood and Little Creatures have done a lot of the hard work for us. Blake started home brewing when he was 16. All I was doing at 16 was being the coolest guy at school and picking up heaps of babes. So how does it, how does it all work? All of our beer like made from barley, malt and wheat. It starts up on the malt floor. Each recipe is kind of designed per style. If you think about malt, um, as toast, or all the way from white bread through the burnt toast. That's yeah. where you get the different flavours and colours from. Right. Once you've set your toast preference, the grain is milled so that water can get in. Water converts the complex starch into simple sugar, 
yeast eats sugar makes alcohol. So essentially that's how it starts. This is where we have, it's called mashing, which is where the barley malt enters. Water converts this to sugar. Then it goes to the kettle where the hops are added. This science stuff is easy. So we're talking hectolitres, which right. is 50 heck or 100 heck. Yeah, I'm talking hectolitres too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've definitely heard that term before and use it all the time. So once we're knocking beer out at like that cooler temperatures for pitching yeast, it comes down to our uh, cellar. So yeah. this is where the 5,000 litre and 10,000 litre tanks are. This here is 10,000 litres of draft, which is our house lager. Right. Uh, this has 5,000 litres of a blueberry sour beer. You chuck blueberries in. This is the that, kind of stuff the Germans the, are going to be. That's the Germans are not happy about. That'll be really um, But that was off. 400 kilos of blueberry in that tank. How much? 400 kilos of blueberry. I don't even know. I can't pick. That's a lot of blueberries. Time for a good old-fashioned tank taste. This is our first beer that we released. Our, our flagship, our Jetty Road Pale. Um, yeah. It's definitely our most popular beer, and uh, it's probably the most brew. Obviously, the most brewed beer as well. So. Yeah. Right. It's like. Drinking straight out of the udder. It doesn't get much fresher than this, mate. This is going straight into cans tomorrow. I'm a bit of a uh, beer glass snob. This is right. pretty much the only glass that I drink out of. Right, and what, what's the idea? The... Uh, the taper at the top helps to hold the aroma. Right. Um, so it just keeps it, I guess, smelling fresher longer. Yep. So you probably get a little bit of like sort of passion fruit, kind of tropical notes. Mm. Jeez, you got a strong core or something. I was about to, my knees are about to give way there. I've been down at tanks to drink a lot, so. Yeah, right. Practice. How much of your day is drinking beer? I try to make it as much as possible, <laughs> but unfortunately it's usually kind of about five o'clock on a Friday. Right, oh right, yeah, yeah, okay. We do sort of tank testing and all that sort of stuff, but up until this point, it's not exactly the nicest thing to drink. Right. Do you want to do a drink in the wink thing? A drink in a wink? Hey. Not sure if I quite nailed that wink. Okay, what am I doing? Off to the bar for a proper sample of some of their huge range. We've tried the pale ale. We're gonna to go to probably a backwards step in terms of flavor profile. We'll try a Jetty Road Draft, which is our house lager. It's just won a silver in the Indie Beer Awards. Oh wow. And it's brewed pretty traditional in terms of ingredients, but we've just used sort of slightly newer newer world cousins of, of the hops. So this has got New Zealand Motowaker in it, which is a cousin of SARS, which is the most traditional sort of lager hop. So it's kind of just got a little bit of a Jetty Road spin on a fairly traditional style. Okay, yeah, lager. this sort of, and a classic kind of Australian. You think of it Aussie beers. This is, someone could travel from 1970 to now and wouldn't be too Would, confused by this. Exactly. <laughs> some of these other ones. There are definitely some people that are still travelling from 1970 to now in the, in the craft beer industry, so that's why we, we wanted to make sure we had something on tap for everyone, and um, this kind of ticks a whole lot of boxes for people that are more mainstream drinkers. Um, yep. And this is personally my lawn mower beer, so once I finish mowing the lawn, or a particularly hard day at work, I like to sort of knock back one of these. Yeah, right. I love the, uh, the idea of a, having a special beer for lawn mowing. Our next beer actually won a gold medal in the International Beer Awards. Oh, hello. Um, which is our IPA and probably my favourite beer to, to drink. Sunset on tap. It's kind of what I was thinking about when we wrote this beer. Like, last one was for mowing the lawn, this one is for sitting there watching the sunset. On the sun. deck. Yeah, it's quite nice, tropical Ooh. fruit aroma. Yeah. Um, it's still got a fairly lean malt base, but unlike pale ale, there's a little bit more of that character there for a bit of sweetness, a bit of... Yeah. Um, and then it carries through for that little bit of extra bitterness that's true to style for an IPA. What is that fruit that I'm tasting? It's sort of like... It's almost like passion fruit. Guava and melon guava. sort of stuff. That's what I was meaning. <laughs> I'm like, don't... I'm like, in my head, I'm like, don't have a guess. You'll what? get it wrong. If you taste passion fruit, then you, that's what... But it is guava. As soon as you said it. Damn it! <laughs> oh, guava. Should have known. Damn. So it's a newer world sort of style IPA. I don't think I've had an IPA like this. This is delicious. Well, we we basically use all American hops in this, so um, it's very American style mm. IPA. Obviously, traditionally it was from England when they were um, over in India. They were sending beer over, and it wasn't lasting the journey. So, as a natural preservative, they increase the alcohol content and increase the, the hops. 
so that hops are a natural preservative and basically people in the mainland England started drinking it and liked the, the bigger bolder flavours and then once the Americans got a hold of it they used obviously American hops in it and it's really bring through a real big fruity kind of classical style to what was a pretty traditional beer. Yeah right, that's a lot of info you got in your head there. I'm going to be by the end of these. <laughs> I'll be napping in about an hour and a half, I reckon. No lawn mowing required. The next beer is a collaboration with a local coffee roastery, Little Rebel. So instead of using coffee, we actually used what's called cascara, which is the cherry that grows around the coffee. Ah, um, right. And then we also added butterfly pea blossom, which is what gives it that nice purple colour. It's an amazing colour. Look at that. Call it a, like a deep mauve. It's only been in keg for like two weeks. Oh, right. But it's just, it's kind of really nice. So it's nice still thing. sort of... Seems like it's, yeah. And I've to never... you, you're, you're still finding that out. Yeah, well, I've, never never really... used, I've never used butterfly pea blossom before, so it was a bit of a... You've never used butterfly pea blossom before? <laughs> well... Amateur. <laughs> what is this, amateur hour here at Jetty Road? <laughs> never used pea body lotus flower. <laughs> Unbelievable. But no, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, the reason that you kind of get into brewing is not necessary to brew pale ale 10 times a week. It's yep. kind of the creative flow behind it as well. Jimmy Rum is two doors down and he had a couple of um, ex-bourbon barrels lying around that he let us use. Um, oh, cool. And I made a Russian Imperial Stout at 10.5% and then Whoa. aged it in um, Tennessee whiskey barrels for nine months. What a colour. So it's um, pretty boozy. There's obviously some nice coffee, chocolate, um, and acidy notes. Oh, that's delicious. It's ni nice and thick. Yeah. Pretty chewy. Um, got a nice sweetness, but you kind of get a bit of that um, bitterness coming through that's sort of a, partly from the darker roasted malt, like I said earlier, the burnt toast, and a bit of that hot flavour to balance out the sweetness that's there in the 10.5% alcohol. If you're smelling burnt toast, you're either having a stroke or drinking a <laughs> 1988. <laughs> Hopefully. That won't make it. Definitely keen to take one home, share it with my old man. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Write him off as well. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Blake. What a lovely spot you've got here. You make, I'm going to say it, you make a very nice beer. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate you coming down. It was good fun showing you around and walking you through some of the, the beers that we've got on offer. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Well, I've had a solid session and the place hasn't even opened yet. Time to unwind. Cracking day down at the Jetty Road Brewery. Can't wait to catch you next time here on the Beer Pioneer. Gee, I really nailed that outro. Turns out these piece to camera bits are really easy for me. I must be a natural. <laughs> Good thing there's plenty more episodes to come after this one. More chances for people at home to see me at work. Next week on the Beer Pioneer, I'll continue my travels around the Mornington Peninsula, retracing the footsteps of William Buckley. Upon escaping the Sorrento settlement, Buckley thought he was heading north to Sydney, and that's where my journey will take me next. Catch you then.